I needed to find out what I wanted to do with my life. It just came natural to be, to be a stone carver. Follow sculpting host Emmanuel Filion, from young apprentice to master carver. As he realizes a new piece, experience his path from concept to completion. Travel to the limestone quarries and monuments of France, the magnificent marble mountains of Italy, and walk in the footsteps of the masters, through the eyes of the sculptor. I, uh, I come in from France and I was in a, in a village surrounded by quarries. That was a place where they store the, the stones and the blocks and where there was a workshop. We would go play in the area where they used to work and, and uh, they would leave their tools out. So we kind of like, you know, look at them, play with them. For me, uh, before I became a sculptor, I think I became a carver. And I became a carver because I love stone. By 15, Emmanuel Filion knew what he wanted to do. Awarded a scholarship, he became a stone carver, majoring in the restoration of historical monuments at the prestigious Ecole Saint Lambert. For me, restoring monuments was kind of like stepping in the path of the old carvers. We are at the Pont Neuf. It's a bridge that goes across the Seine River in Paris. Hi, Antonio. Antonio. Ça va? Antonio is a sculptor, and uh, we used to work together. And Antonio is actually carving now a head. This head has been replaced by uh, another stone, by the stone carver that replaced the head and put a new stone, in which Antonio now is carving a duplicate from the original model. What Antonio is doing is really trying to put himself in a sculptor's shoes that did this work to be as honest as possible. The restoration of monuments in France and throughout the world has been an ongoing commitment for over a century and a great source of training for young and talented carvers. To keep his ideas fresh, like many sculptors, Emmanuel works on more than one piece at a time. These sculptures take form in clay, bronze, limestone, and marble. Inside his Malibu studios, Emmanuel follows the traditional ways. Personally, that's what I do. I do start with ideas, drawings, small models. He works day and night for many weeks as an idea begins to take shape. This inspiration first begins to emerge in clay. When the clay sculpture is finished, he applies a silicone mold. This is important to create a negative print, preserving the piece. Without this cautionary step, he could be at risk for damaging his work. In the clay, you can see here, all those details, up to the fingerprints. With the success of the silicone impression, now he can make a plaster model. The clay is the original work, then you cast it in plaster, and plaster is a temporary stage between the two, between the clay and the marble. With the small plaster model complete, Emmanuel travels to Italy, to the Alpone Alps, to the legendary marble mountains in northern Tuscany, to the villages and towns of Pietrasanta and Carrara, where stone carving has been practiced for centuries. This is original cut by the Romans, so it could be older than uh, 2,000 years old. It is here Michelangelo lived and worked, even supervising the quarrying of his own stone. His artistic genius still fills the region with example and inspiration. But with Michelangelo, it is really that he has this tension and they fight. The figure f is in this block and they fight with a kind of energy. And nobody has ever done that and, and nobody knows how he did it. This is the philosophy of Michelangelo that he said that the statue is already inside the marble. It's enough to take off what is around the statue. And the statue is done. Emmanuel arrives to meet with his team of highly skilled and specialized artisans who will assist him in transforming the small model into a life size. We are uh, at Lorenzo Dal Torrione, Il Maestro. This is the person who is enlarging my uh, model that I cast in, in the US. So this is the enlargement, the life size now. So I'm going to have a lot of work. 
When the clay enlargement is finished, the next master artisan will create the life-size plaster mold. So Sirio is a great mold maker. He has to be very focused because he doesn't want to, he has to remember what is the shape of the cast inside because if he goes too deep, he's going to break the sculpture. Yeah, piano piano. Yeah, piano piano, see. Yeah. Finally, to an artigiano where the marble sculpting will begin. We are in the studio of Marco Giannoni. He's young, energetic, talented, and uh, I'm looking forward to collaborate with him. Is the tradition of a specialized team essential to create a masterwork? What is an artigiano? An artigiano is a generic term that would be craftsperson or craftsman. They use that term when they refer to the men that work with marble, but that term actually could refer to any craft. Not any one craftsperson working in marble would do the entire sculpture. Uh, it was like an orchestra where each one played their instrument so that many people would work on that same sculpture. In search of the perfect marble block, Emmanuel explores one of the largest marble quarries. As you can see, the block is completely sound. So if we cut that way, it would be easier. If, I, if I'm going to break this by an impact, yeah. it would be easier to break it yeah. from here yeah. than to try to break it from Obviously, here. Obviously, yes. If you want to break the, the marble like the limestone, if you uh, cut it on the bed, like the, on the, bed. Call it, you yeah. say the flurry cut or the cross cut, it will be much easier. They enter the tunnels and massive caves. What is the name of the quarry here? The, the, um, the name of this quarry is Marmi Galleria Ravaccione. And this quarry has been opened uh, 40, 45 years ago in the middle of the, of the mountain. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and I'm going to ask uh, as many people as I can to say this is the size block I need. Yeah. I need that quality. And then we have to look within the quarry yes. if we can extract something like Obviously, that. Obviously, yeah, each, each quarry has, each quarry has a, a, their own type of materials. What makes a good piece of marble? It's, the sound is like glass. You see how deep is the sound. We will see how the stone is extracted and transported. Here on the back you can see the zigzag that is the access to the statuary quarry. And every morning here, sculptors, carvers and customers, they are coming to buy and to select the blocks they need for their job. Experience the history from those still alive, willing to share the past. And then there were the, the Roman slaves working in the quarry. And witness the dangers that remain today. We are seeing uh, two men that uh, they are climbing the rocks, as we, we saw in the, uh, in the museum. Yeah, this is really dangerous. I mean, they, they lost really? the armor. If somebody is passing with the car, they make a hole wow. like that. They, they realized that there, was a, that there was a crack in the blocks. They, they move it before, because otherwise, it, when they're moving, this piece falls, and if there is somebody behind, uh, can die. Can Emmanuel turn his vision into form? And can it be immortalized in marble? What makes a great sculptor? All this to be revealed through the eyes of the sculptor. This is what I'm made for. I like to carve. Funding for Through the Eyes of the Sculptor was provided by the Annenberg Foundation. The Annenberg Foundation exists to advance public well-being through improved communication.